Hi, this is Chris Howard, host of Plugged In with Chris Howard. BetOnline is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contests, odds, and lines right up to the national championship game. BetOnline is your number one source for all your college basketball wagering. Head to BetOnline today. Stay updated on all the action. BetOnline, the game starts here. Thanks for listening to CarCast on Podcast One. Hey guys, welcome to CarCast. Uh, we've got a fun show. We're going to chat. Uh, we're going to get into some news, talk about new uh, uh, Bronco Warthog coming out, F-150 EV. Some uh, some information's come out about that. Uh, Acura TLX uh, Type S seems kind of interesting and more. Before we get started, uh, word from our friends at Dodge. As you know, Dodge has been ranked number one for initial quality and best driver appeal for mass market brands by J.D. Power. It's the first U.S. brand ever to be ranked number one in initial quality and appeal in the same year. So see your local Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com to schedule a test drive today. Hello, welcome to CarCast. I'm Matt, the moderator, DeAndre, here with Bill Goldberg. Good day, sir. What's How up, are you? How you I'm doing? doing? Good, man. Yeah. Uh, right on. There's some interesting news and stuff we want to cover today, but uh, uh, man, lots going on, on on your front as well. There's uh, always uh, car projects, garage projects <laughs> as the weather starts to warm up and uh, starting to see what, what 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 sort of damage has been left in in the way. Let's of, talk about uh, let's talk about damage. Let's talk about <laughs> you know moving to Texas and every 15 minutes the weather changes. So yeah. I was ab- I was abruptly woken up in the middle of the night <clears throat> about I don't know one o'clock two o'clock mm-hmm. cracking thunder lightning and hail yeah and the TRX and the Porsche that was just delivered Wanda's Porsche after a three year hiatus yeah up in L A was just delivered you know like two days before and they were both sitting outside well the TRX has got the Paint protection film all over the goddamn thing. Uh, well, but the yeah, Porsche, but if, if, uh, if, if we were living five miles down the road where they got one inch size hail, oh my god, I don't think I don't think it would have. I could have heated it up all it wanted to and rubbed it, and it wouldn't have corrected that. I can, tell you. can you hide the Porsche under the TRX? That was it's just well, you know that's a, <laughs> that's a distinct possibility. Um, I <laughs> but, I, uh, uh, yeah, I was terrified the, the hail not a fan of um no. but i do kind of like the the thunder and lightning when it rains absolutely it's wonderful but, i you know i do kind of <laughs> like that part you know when you're standing inside with a cup of joe and in the fireplace on but uh but animals don't like it they much, don't they don't like it because because yeah the animals don't like it but then the hail gets ridiculously loud you know uh, yeah and, and, and damaging and damaging um Anyway, I brought it up because I knew you were going to mention the Porsche, and I wanted to get an update on that car, right? So uh, this is Wanda's – what year is the car? It's a 92. 92 Turbo, right? It's a 92 yeah. Turbo. Uh, uh, I've seen it. It's it's fantastic. Uh, I remember years ago you were having a few like tuning issues that still kind of need to be worked out, but – you, you were saying that you, you got it back because it was still in California. It was one of the last things to get delivered. Did you do an exhaust on it? Did you have rich? Did you? Did well, it was it was in the showroom up at Magnafloor, I think, for the last two years. That's right. While yes. it while it was waiting for its you know uh, appointment at this boutique Porsche boutique up in L.A. So um, let's just say nothing was done. Let's <laughs> just say it runs, it drives, it, it sputters like it did when it left. But the fact that we got it back is yeah. is wonderful, and we've already garnered, you know, the uh, the Porsche guy uh, within Ranger Creek Road because I got I live on a road where there's five to five to fifteen car collectors with you know ten to fifty car collections. It's amazing, right? So you could just walk so, down your street or grab your ATV, drive down the, the street. TRX, see has the, the most Porsches. Right? <laughs> see has the most so Porsches and stop. So, but I'm talking to the dude with the TRX, right? And he's setting up the appointment to send it down to Mario to get his stuff done. And I said, you know, um, I, I don't know if you know this guy, but I, I heard that there was a Porsche guy that lived on Ranger Creek. 
And he goes, you mean the guy that was driving the 87 by your house at 90 the other night? And I went, <laughs> yeah. And he goes, that, that's me. So long story short, um, killed two birds with one stone, man. Got a new Porsche uh, uh, shop up in San Antonio. The car is going to get picked up next week. And uh, we just wanted driving right now. Yeah. I'm going to do some, we'll do some crazy stuff to it later, but I just want her to enjoy. I, I, I That's a good point because I, I did see uh, some of Wanda's posts. She's like, my car is back. My baby's back. And, and you know, she has a million posts with all the animals and everything and, and stuff. But uh, I know she really likes that car and kind of missed the car as I, yeah, I you know, as well. Can you, can you see the hand marks on my <laughs> neck? Because they've been around it for the last three years. You know, finally she released the grip. And, you know, it's just good to have it back, man. The car, the car is a beast. I mean, you remember the backstory on that car, right? I go up to, to get punked on Jesse James. And he's, uh, and I'm driving my, I got a twin turbo. I think it was an 07, something like that. And uh, he immediately fell in love with the car. I sold it to him. I really didn't like it because it was an all-wheel drive. And uh, Bob Johnson, the guy in, in Georgia who kind of turned me on to the hobby way back when, about 115 years ago, um, had this car that was you know 90% original except for it had uh, been upgraded a bit with an intercooler and a, a larger turbo in uh, Scottsdale. And since then, the place has gone out of business, so we tried to track everything down. wasn't possible, and so the thing just it needs a retune. It needs probably the the original intercooler put back on there, which is going to be a struggle to find. But at the end of the day, we just need it running right now, so Wanda could have some fun. Yeah. All right. Well, sounds fantastic. Well, look at it. it it's been sitting still for so long that you haven't really put many miles on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's always a good there, thing. There's always oh, um, and they've gone up in value so much, those those turbos. No question. You know, I really want to get maybe, uh, um, I don't know, Get let, let's get a Porsche expert on because I'm very curious about the backstory. Um, there's a, there's a, I guess the last, uh, uh, water cooled engines. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember. I don't know the year. I don't know too much about these Porsches, but since I have this yeah. car, I well, you have one of the last of, of the air cooled engines, which is the air cool car. Yeah. And they're, they're, yeah. they're, they've really gone up in value. And yeah. uh, I, I believe the first generation of water cooled cars are, are not high value. There was some issue. I don't remember what it was with a bearing or a water pump or something. Uh, some, somebody yeah. listening would be able to correct me on that. Um, I don't know that applied to the turbos at the time, just for the, the regular 911s. But uh, you're right. Somebody somebody out there knows a hell of a lot more about the about the Porsches than than I do. And it would be interesting to talk to somebody a little bit about that. No question. Uh, but your car, there. I can tell you, the air-cooled 993s uh, you know, uh, and your air-cooled turbo – has definitely gone up in value. It is definitely a car you guys will want to keep. Of course, drive it, have some fun with it. It's but a it's, beautiful it's, car. Yeah, it I really mean, the, is. The aesthetics car. on that car are yeah. just, you know, it's reminiscent of the, the XKE lines. Yeah, and it's just, no, just... Just for what it is. And it's still just so analog, like just driving it, shifting it, everything is is kind of kind of fun about the whole thing, but... Oh, it's terrifying. That's why I bought it. <laughs> um, all right. So we've got some other stuff to uh, to chat about. Um, let me just uh, remind you about our friends over at Dodge. We'll give them a little love. As you guys have heard before, Dodge has officially opened orders of the 2021 Durango SRT Hellcat. It's the most powerful SUV ever. Uh, I believe they told, uh, told us these were going to be limited production, about 2,000 of them made, and only in this year. And uh, I know most of them are sold or 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 pretty much have been ordered by the dealer. So you might find a couple of dealers that have them. But also check out the uh, the the Charger RT. You can get the the V8 version and hop it up any way you want. But uh, but the Hellcat, exclusive for 2021, features the 710 horsepower engine, new aggressive exterior styling, and a new interior with a cockpit with a driver centric cockpit which is uh which is great and now all buyers will see, receive a full day of pro instruction at the Bonner and High Performance Driving School which I think just changed its name and I don't recall what the name is <laughs> I'm about Archer or uh, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know what it is but uh 
uh, same school. It's going to be a hard one to remember. Yeah, yeah. Sure, it, but... It'll come to me at some point. Um, but either way, Quite same obviously, school. Obviously, it's hard to remember because you get two gearheads right here that love to go to the Bondurant, but we can't remember. Yeah. So uh, Chris, same school, same program, different name. You get to go to that thing. So uh, you, <laughs> you, <laughs> you get to go to that thing. <laughs> you get to go to that thing, which <laughs> you'll, you'll love doing. You'll love doing. Um, and of course, Dodge is ranked number one for initial quality and best driver appeal for mass market brands by JD Power. It's the first U.S. brand ever to be ranked number one in initial quality and appeal in the same year. So see your local Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com today to schedule a test drive. Yeah, what is the name of that? Uh what is the name of the new Bonnerant school? Radford? Radford, Radford. Racing School. Yes, Radford. Yeah, yeah. Radford. I, I wasn't even close. Yeah. There was an A and an R in there. Um, okay, so if if you guys have been following me on social media, as you're listening to this, you would have seen recently I posted a few pictures of this the Nissan Z, right? When we uh when Adam Kroll and I went to Tennessee, I think we went to Tennessee <laughs> and were part of the <laughs> debut. Uh and it was sort of the virtual debut, and then we went and saw the the Z Proto, the prototype here in person, and it was the now you can talk yellow. about it because pictures are out, right? right. So the comments were, I agreed that the bright yellow that they debuted it with was probably not the most flattering color. Um, when so you they see, went on the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, you know <laughs> when, when we saw the car in person, you can see it was a throwback color, but. When you see it photographed, especially during the live presentation, and it was on the jumbotrons, and it's all kind of backlit with these LEDs, you know, on the screens, it just made it look like a fluorescent green, and it was really, really bright. And then when we saw it in person, um, it's interesting. We went to like uh, this place that's kind of like an art gallery, and um, and then there they had like the lights dimmed and just a couple like detail spotlights like an art gallery would have on the car. And it really kind of changed it. And one of the things I said when I came back was, hey, the big grill in the front has this big mouth in the front and the grill. I said, when you get up on it in person, it has more personality than you think. It's not just flat with like the honeycomb grill. It has like – uh, an upper and lower version of it um, in the blacked out area. It's tough to see in the photos. Um, but now there's these photos that are coming out of two vehicles. I can't tell if it's like in a manufacturing facility or a shipping facility. And I don't know why they put a piece of black tape over the Z on the front of the car and on the side of the quarter uh, panels because it was very clearly what it is. But uh, or or maybe I don't know maybe just the logos were missing or something and they just put tape over <laughs> over like the the embossed portion of the bodywork. Um, but there was a gray one and a silver one which looked very interesting. Um, the first thing we figured out was the production car is as close to that prototype car as possible. And they told us they kind of they basically told us like yeah that the the Z Proto is. Like 90% production car at that point. Well, hats off to them for, you know, teasing yeah. the public and then being able to deliver something really close to it. Yeah, and they did. And then when you see that front end picture, you'll notice that the grill, they added some on all the little, uh, like, kind of oval shaped uh, vents on the upper portion of the grill. They added some chrome trim around there. Now I don't know if that's going to be on all of the Z's or different trim models, like a Platinum or a Limited or whatever, right? But you can see that that chrome trim actually made the grill look more defined and smaller. And I, I that is one of the changes that they they came up with. And it looks uh, it looks pretty good. There was a little uh, video posted as well. It looked like. It's tough to tell, but on the silver car, it looked like the um, like the lights are kind of blacked out. Like the headlights, uh, clear lens, but the back plastic looks to be a dark, I don't know, a gray or black. And uh, I don't know. It looks pretty interesting. And I know I got a lot of comments on the interior shot. People going, hey, what's that little nubby thing in the in the center console that looks like an automatic transmission shifter? Uh, yes, it is an automatic transmission. <laughs> However, unlike the Supra, which we talked about, 
Mm. I'm told many, many times again and again, the car will be offered with a manual transmission. It will have an optional automatic, which I don't, I don't know if it's, you know, 10, 10 speed or, or what, but uh, I am told a manual transmission will, will, will be in there. And then of course the rumors are still that it will have Infinity's turbo V6 engine that's in the the the, the all wheel drive Red Sport. I believe it's all wheel drive. That's a 400 horsepower engine. So I, mm-hmm. I know in the past, you know, the the naming the three liter, you know, the Z, the 300, the 370Z. It had to do with the displacement of the engine, and calling it a 400Z is not a four liter <laughs> engine, but it's now it's the horsepower. So we don't know for sure if it's going to be a 400Z or not. Maybe they just call it Z. Maybe they call it something else. I I, I don't really know, but um, but the car looks good. It you can see it in these colors, and it definitely is is better than the yellow, right? Yes. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I just kind of wanted to get that reminiscent out there. of that kind of yellow. It really was like when you see uh, you, you got a sticky note right there, and it's that bright yellow. And I'm telling you, like even on the screen now, right? Because I'm looking at you on like a you know like an LED screen. It it's so day glow, like it's just mm-hmm. you know like if you're going to go hunting, you'd slap those things all over your pants. <laughs> it speaks highlighter. Yeah, it does. It does seem like a highlighter. Um. Anyway, so some spy photos that you'll see or just some leaked photos, for for lack of a better term, uh, showed up online. You can go to my social media, at Motorator. You'll see some photos, and uh, and you'll see on Facebook and Twitter I linked to a YouTube video that is a video walk around, like a little bit of a walk around. Mm. Uh, I, I didn't figure out how to put the YouTube video on Instagram, so the Instagram guy, <laughs> you don't get it. <laughs> and, uh, you should have your own video. I know. I in should. Little, I should. In your little spy camera. I, I once soon as I get to Japan, I'll be all over that. <laughs> um, okay. So what was next was coming up was more spy photos have being are being picked up as cars sort of run around town, and the two that I wanted to touch on because uh, we've we've covered them and uh, people are into them are one is first. The Ford F-150 EV, the electric F-150, how are they going to do it? What sort of drivetrain and stuff is going to happen? And what's interesting is, you know, uh, people got the spy photos of it. It's all camoed up and masked up and stuff. But someone was able to get underneath it. I don't know if they're physically getting underneath (laughs) it or it's like the telephoto lens and they just managed Mm -hmm. to, to, you know, uh, uh, get a glimpse. But what's interesting is – it is not a leaf spring, leaf spring rear suspension. It is a coilover rear suspension, but not coilovers on a live axle. It is an independent rear suspension. So the the center section is fixed, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because in that center section appears to be an electric motor. So it's rear wheel drive. I'm sure there's sort of some sort of all wheel drive version going on, um, but. It it does power the rear wheels, and what's interesting is somebody recently, I think it was like Magna, one of the suppliers, um, uh, posted uh, like a patent saying, "Oh, here's an idea of an electric <coughs> motor on a leaf spring in the rear axle." And then my thought was, that would be heavy. That's a lot of weight to put on the suspension pieces. It didn't seem like the smartest idea. I'm sure it'll apply to somebody. But Ford's solution is, hey, independent rear suspension. So the motor in the center section is fixed, attached (laughs) attached to the chassis. And then we just have these upper and lower control arms and half shafts like any proper IRS would have. (laughs) Uh, But that's interesting, right? Like it could provide a, a, sm- a smoother ride, better handling. Um, I don't know if there's going to be sort of an airbag version in the back with the coil spring so you can change towing capacity. That's always been kind of the thing. It's like, how do you get away with coil springs? How do you get away with independent rear suspension? It starts to affect towing capacity, load capacity. Uh, so maybe the idea is it's got a stiff coil spring or uh, it's adjustable with an airbag of some sort. 
uh, or maybe just the capacity of the EV F-150 is is designed to be less than the full F-150, so you can kind of pick which version you want. You can get an EV version, you can get the Power Boost hybrid version, or you can get the big V8 version or the EcoBoost version. Like there's obviously there's no so many possibilities. Yeah, there's there's you know there's a lot you could you could do there. Uh, it's creating more questions than answers. Yeah. So, right now. Anyway, it looked interesting. I thought you guys would want to know. It's an interesting design, uh, but it does seem like if you're looking for an F-150 that you drive as kind of a daily driver and you do haul some stuff and occasionally tow some stuff, but it's just kind of like a daily work truck, I would imagine the EV version with an independent rear is going to be the smoothest riding one you're going to be able to get. You know, Um Anyway, on to bigger, badder, tougher things. The Ford Bronco. We talked about Bronco uh, having a a quote unquote Raptor version of the Bronco. Ford is developing a a hopped up version from the factory, like the Raptor. Hundred uh, percent. Yes, it's going to be called the Warthog, and even with all of the camo and stuff all wrapped around it, it looks badass. It looks tough. Um, now, the beauty of the Bronco, as we talked about, is how modular it is. All of the fenders and quarter panels and grills and everything can come off the thing. The aftermarket is just going to jump on that thing. Like, I just... I, I I mean, the timing of rolling out these trucks and what SEMA is probably working on um, uh, is, you know, coming up in November... Um, SEMA does this great thing. SEMA Garage does this great thing where they they try to get access to an early version or pre-production or, or early production version of a vehicle, and then they host a measuring session at the SEMA Garage out here in California. And uh, aftermarket parts manufacturers are allowed to uh, sign up and go to that event – and measure the vehicle, but then also use SEMA Garage's tools, you know, scanning tools and things like that. You can get all the but data. that hasn't on. been available during the pandemic. It, it hasn't been available yet, which is interesting because I think they just had in there the Aston Martin DBX SUV. Yeah. Yeah, which they, is going to be meaning nice. Meaning the only one or they just – like right now, they're just having it. I, I think the they, there's a few on the road people are buying, but they had it either recently or, or it was soon. They had the DBX as a measuring session. I, not a car that I saw was going to be highly modified, but it, it is happening. Um, by the way, Jeep said their, their, uh, their Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer, they're expecting and hoping – Ralph Gilles is hoping – it's going to be one of the most modified vehicles at SEMA. He's saying, "I'm all in on this. Wow. Everybody, make an Overlander version, make a you know street version, just like make accessories for it." He's all in. He's like, he wants to see the Wagoneer just get dressed up in every way possible, and he just wants that that ultra luxury large SUV, which would compete with a uh, Lincoln Navigator and. Customizable and, and which es- Escalade, yeah, he wants the competition to see. Is. He's like, just because it's high end uh, SUV, a full size SUV, he goes, doesn't mean I don't want you to make an Overlander version. He's like, do it. I want to see it. Like, go all in on it. So anyway, so Ford, uh, the, the spy shots of the Warthog, um, just uh, you know, the, the big bumpers and flared fenders and the big tires, and it, it just looks tough. Uh, as well. Now, I don't know exactly what engine is going to be in it, but signs are sort of port- pointing toward the three liter EcoBoost engine in the Ford Explorer ST, which is a 400 horsepower uh, turbo, um, which wouldn't be bad and is a pretty good jumping off point. You know, oh, it's a um, good start. Yeah, for I'm, damn sure. I, I'm sure with just a tune, you're you know at 440, 450, depending on the octane. And- Easy, and that thing weighs nothing. And you, and let's back up a second. You can't tell me that that anybody out there needs that uh, SEMA measuring spot for that Bronco. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, now, right. Because that's been way done, and I guarantee you that'll be the most customized vehicle. That seems like absolutely no doubt, and this will be the the first time that we'll be able to see that much stuff 
available to the public immediately because of the timing of all of this. Yeah. Yeah, I, no. I think you're absolutely right. It's going to be all over the place at semen. It's going to be fun to see. Um, the spy photos show uh, a much beefier suspension. Uh, control arms are beefier. Coil springs are, are – the front coils are beefier. Um, uh, a little bit like what we saw on the Ranger Raptor, which we still don't have out here, but we did see it other places in the world. And uh, – <laughs> It, it's got a lot of the bones from the Ranger Raptor in it in the in the Warthog. Um, Let's just talk about the fact that they've got years and years and years of R and D in this space, man. So I mean, they're they're just waiting to pull the trigger on so many cool things. I would imagine. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting how that uh, how that comes out because I think it's gonna be um, it's gonna be a good looking uh, good looking vehicle, and it'll be interesting to see. The Raptor Evolve as well, right? Because we know the new version of the Raptor is going to be out this summer. But with the current twin turbo V6, and then next year, you know, of course, the V8 version is – we're hearing the GT500 engine in that thing. I mean, why not? I still love that battle between Ford and uh, and and Ram on just making com- completely silly over the tops while we still can. Well, that and I think that your statement of – it's going to be next year. I think it's going to be pushed, pushed forward or, or backward in yeah, that it's like going to be sooner. Sooner <laughs> rather than Well, you know, as as things keep moving more and more to these 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 strict cafe standards and hybrids and EVs, um, I I think we're we're really kind of chomping at the bit on on getting the our last little hurrah of 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 ice vehicles and uh and we want you know we want that stuff um to the extent that we can still get it which also brings up an interesting the, the my next point is uh BMW well Audi has basically said yeah we're going to do away with internal combustion engines ice seems to be the term I, I I'm not sure I'd love that term simply yeah, because I don't, it's, I don't it's, no. it's it's an acronym used on so many different things uh so Audi is saying, yes, in the next few years over time, we have no plans to continue making engines or designing anything new. So everything on a go-forward basis is going to be toward EV. I, and I believe Mercedes has made a similar statement. BMW, on the other hand, <clears throat> is saying uh, our our line of minis, uh, mini will become electric. And we expect about half of our vehicles sold to be electric, but we still see a demand for a gas engine vehicle, uh, which is interesting. And they're, they're not really putting a cap on it. They're not saying a gas engine vehicle for the next three, four, five years. They're saying it's kind of indefinite for now, and we'll see how things go. Mm-hmm. So Audi made their statement and said, no more gas engines. And then BMW said, we're still kind of in on gas engines for a while. We like them. And then Audi came back and said, well, we're not opposed to doing gas engines again at some point. We're just – it's not in our future plan goal. now. Uh, you know, I, I want to just kind of touch on this, but I'm not educated enough to speak about all the ups and downs. And we're going to get into a scientific conversation at some point. But as we start guess. right, as we start <laughs> looking at electrification of vehicles and making it the industry standard, which is largely being pushed by uh, politics uh, because they don't have another solution, is EV the best solution? Like what – What's it taking the mining that needs to happen to get the batteries created? And then where do we put these batteries? Yeah, where do they go? Where do they go? You know, are we able to recycle stuff? What sort of damages? And then the the amount of power we need to generate. You know, I mean, where does the wreck Tesla go? Yeah, uh, yeah. Where do you safely dispose of a battery like that? I don't, I don't know where that goes. And besides, do you put the battery back in where you found it? Because (laughs) originally, that's you know, do you just bury it all back to where yeah. it was sourced. So interesting questions. Uh, I'd like to dig into more. I don't know uh, what the answers are. Um, and and I, I guess my question would be, 
as these car companies and and so many other companies, the vendors and stuff are pushing toward electric vehicles, are they also building an infrastructure of recyclability and and power grid and whatever? And then how are we producing that power? Are we, are we moving toward more natural power sources like solar? Because many places don't have the infrastructure t- for that kind of thing. When I say places, I mean cities and states, mm-hmm. you know, don't really have the infrastructure. Meanwhile, there is thought about alternative fuels, like clean burning synthetic fuels, like this e-fuel initiative that Mazda and Porsche have been kicking around. And I'd be interested in learning a little more about that, which also, if they come up with a clean burning alternative fuel and it is in a liquid form, then it is much easier to roll that out to gas stations all around the planet, right? So, uh, you know, there, there's some thought around that. And I don't think that's getting enough attention because there's so much pressure on oh, getting EV. Yeah, and I, for lack of a better term, right, politics. There's There's just so much pressure on going, we need to clean up – we need to clean up. We need to clean up. No more gas engine vehicles. You got to make EVs. And, and well, that's their an- that's their answer, and it's the end all. But is it the right? If, I just don't know if that's way. We all we all want the same thing. Is it the best way? We don't know. Um, anyway, so there's that. <laughs> uh, I I like to dig into this more. Maybe we'll get <laughs> Alistair back on uh, uh, at some point soon and see if he's got some thoughts on it. Um, He's uh, he's a little more tuned into some of that stuff. Uh, anyway, so something onto onto something a little more fun. But uh, actually, before we hit that, let me hit this. Uh, let me hit this Geico Geico ad. Do you guys own your home or rent your home? Well, you do. We know you do. It's one of those things, and um, we know it can be a lot of hard work. But you know, it's easy. It's bundling your policies with Geico. Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. And that's a good thing because we already have so much to do around our homes already. So just go to Geico.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's Geico easy. Visit Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. So when we were in Monterey a little while back, when we were allowed to go to Monterey for a car event, um, we swung by one of our favorite events, Chris, is the Acura event. Oh, yeah. Right? We get to hang out. And That's where I met Jewel. That's right. You got to meet Jewel, the musician, who is actually a pretty funny person. She does <laughs> kind of an acoustic comedy music bit. And uh, uh, it was that a great That shouldn't have been my first highlight, but it actually <laughs> yeah. is a great event. Yeah. Well, also. Have I told you, do you guys know my Jewel story? No. Oh, I'm all ears <laughs> yeah, now. So I'm all curious. ears now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it was right. It was when she was very raw. Yeah. Okay. I get, I don't even know. It's a weird one, man. It's a weird one. And and I don't want to, uh, <clears throat> don't pass judgment on Jewel in this, <laughs> right? So um, I get cut by the, by the LA Rams. I come back. My brother lives in San Diego. The next night we go to a concert at a, a club called the belly up, which he now owns. Ironic. Yeah. So we went to a concert and there was this singer and I had no idea who she was. And her name was Jewel and she was a pretty girl. Right. And so I wanted to, I grabbed my brother and we went to go get a, a front view of her singing from the front of the stage. Cause we were on the side and we're walking parallel and we look and she, <laughs> she's, throws a big loogie out in the in the crowd <laughs> and it stopped us in our tracks and we went back and i was like oh we're good so that's my jewel story that was 19 <laughs> 19 1992 oh wow yeah yeah 1992 no 1991 actually yeah, that was a long time ago. So, Jewel, Jewel, we we've all grown up since then. Wait, yeah, yeah. so why did she spit on you guys? <laughs> no, she didn't spit on us. It was it, she just. It's like I don't know. I still think it was. I, I, 
Oh, she was just like performing, and yes, and yes, she was like the way Gary Oldman acts in every scene. (laughs) Right, like yeah, it was a Alice Cooper moment, or I don't know what it was. Maybe it was a piece of gum. If you have to hit those high notes, you got to do whatever's necessary. A piece of gum, yeah. And then I met her, you know, like a hundred years later, and she was absolutely wonderful. But I mean that. That's my Jill story. And I can't, you can't make that up. No, oh, yeah. and, and actually, when, when, I'm going with gum from now on. Yeah, it, maybe it was gum. Maybe it was a chiclet or something. Is that what they called? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> chiclet. <laughs> yeah. That's my jewel story. Yeah. Oh, well, when we saw her, she actually has, uh, she does, she did like this acoustic set um, and kind of was like a storyteller moment. It was like kind of storytelling about the songs and being That's on the cool. road and, and it was funny. Like, she was funny, and she kind of, like, even poked fun at herself. She's yeah. like, yeah, back when I used to sound like Kermit the Frog when I would sing this song. And, and uh, you know, just kind of, you know, uh, people telling her, like, fix your tooth. And she's like, I don't want to fix my tooth. And I like it. Uh, I like my yeah. snaggle tooth. You want to get a back, and, you want to get a, some backstory on Jewel? Watch uh, The Alaskan Frontier, because that's about her family. And yeah. I, I learned a lot about her and the quirkiness and where it came from. And, She's really creative and cool, man. Yeah. And it's pretty funny seeing the kind of the behind the scenes of her life and her family. So you kind of can figure out where it all came from. Well, she was at an Acura event and there was a car there as well. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry, I derailed that entire story for 30 minutes. No, no, no. It's it's good. Um, and the, anyway, the car that was there was the Acura TLX, the Type S. And it was this great looking sedan like mid-sized sedan and Acura wanting to get back into sort of the sporty nature of things obviously you have the type r uh the civic type r and the nsx and uh it just it just looked good and i kind of like the idea of of a super sedan for for lack of a better term it needs to fit into the right uh category but this is uh it i think the regular t TLX will have a two liter turbo and the Type S, I, I think we're looking at three liter turbocharged V6, 355 horsepower, 354 pound feet of torque. It has their super handling all wheel drive system, which is a really cool system, a 10 speed automatic suspension. Um, it's a little bit more sport tuned. Um, it has different settings, the Sport Plus driving modes and things like that. But <clears throat> uh, they finally announced the pricing and availability. And it's going to start in the low 50s, right, which is not bad. You know, 50-something grand, probably loaded up with a few options. No, I mean, get closer it, to that's great, 000. especially in that space. There aren't that many people in that space, and that seems to come in lower than most, right? Yeah. Uh, it'll be available in May. So you can start getting on this right now. It's it's a good looking vehicle. I mean, I, I was looking at some of the the photos, and my first thought was like, yeah, I could probably lower it a little bit. Probably could be lowered just a just a little bit. Uh, but uh, no no problem there. I'm sure that's going to be one of the things that can be addressed easily if you really want that that look. Uh, but Acura is saying, hey, this is a this is a great sporty sedan. It's going to be one of their best handling vehicles aside from the NSX. And uh, as much as uh, people already love the Civic Type R, that's the front wheel drive and, and version of it. But um, I think the longer wheelbase uh, it helps it compared to the Type R, and uh, it it looks good. So expect to to start in the fifties, um, and you know, depending on the options, and I don't know how many options are available, but, you know, you're probably getting off the lot around 60 grand with this thing. It'll be available in May. And with 355 horsepower, I, I bet it scoots around pretty good. It's a good-looking car. Let's be honest. The, the supercar sedan market could never be too big, right? Mm-hmm. So bring it on. Yeah, but this is a good way to get into this market without spending a hundred thousand dollars. Right. Exactly. Because you're going to spend that on marketably 90% of the rest of them. Yeah. Right. You know what I want to see is I want to see that, that uh, classified classification of wagon come back. That's what I want to see. Oh yeah. Well, uh, 
our buddy from uh, from Microsoft, who's a huge Audi fan, uh, our buddy uh, Justin. Well, he I don't think he's at Microsoft anymore, but um, he's just out kind of roaming the earth like Kane and Kung Fu and uh, <laughs> having a great time. Kung Fu. He, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, he's the best. The he's the best dude ever. And uh, he's just posting pictures of his – his Audi is it RS6 wagon, the Avant, the RS6. He's got the super wagon, Man. and that thing just looks badass. I think his is the dark blue. I think one just popped up on Bring a Trailer. Last I looked, it was a hundred something thousand bucks. It was a red one. So somebody ordered it or didn't take delivery or whatever, or it's just flipping it right away. But it looks uh, it looks pretty cool. I don't know. I want one of those, whether it's a Caddy or whether it's a, an Audi or whether it's a Dodge Magnum. You know, I mean, that's that. I, I'm not going to say that. What, what did the What did they used to call it? The Dodge. Yeah, version? the Magnum. Yeah, it was, it was a Magnum. Yeah, yeah. Avoid um, that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. It's just the 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 idea of that space. I, mean, I don't know if a super wagon would be bitching. Yeah, I think. and I don't know if. Um, if Cadillac's going to do a new version, because we talked like about the CT4 and the CT5, the yeah. V series Blackwing, it Sedan would be style. badass if they did a, a wagon like this did with the CTS V wagon. Um, but right now, I think that Audi is is the super wagon. You know, that's that's the that's the, the big, pinnacle. Yeah, right? that's I mean, is anybody close? Does anybody make anything similar to it? I don't know if <laughs> AMG still has a, a, a super wagon. You know, if uh, if Mercedes has an AMG wagon, um, I haven't done much with Benz in a while, but um, curious to yeah, see but that. Right now, I think Audi is 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 the one. Um, and look, I, I guess the closest thing out there would be the uh, the Panamera Sport Turismo, which is the big yeah. the big hatch. But I kind of like I kind of like the Audi version better. I do, yeah. I do kind of like yeah. the Audi version better of it. The styling. It's yeah, much more on point with what. Yes. Um, anyway, all right. So the last thing I want to touch on, and then we'll wrap things up, is uh, uh, a while back. If you remember that some guy was driving his uh, Porsche, I can't believe the Carrera that. GT. Yes, you know what Tell I'm going me. to. He had the Carrera GT, and he had like the rare Gambala version called the Mirage GT. And there were only one of two or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't know. It's four. like very, very limited, very limited. And uh, I, you're right. I'm trying to see if, I, if we even know how And he couldn't have done more of a jackass move in New York or wherever it was. That's what it was. He was in New York. Playing pinball off of 15 cars or whatever. That's it. Just smashed into a bunch of cars. I think a cop car or something like that. Just <laughs> smashed into a bunch of cars. It was basically caught on camera, uh, uh, or at least the wreckage was caught on and camera. And then took off. And, yeah, and tried to drive that thing around some more. And, uh, I, I don't know, it's just seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar car just and just smashed into a bunch of cars like i don't know you're just drunk you're high or something uh well all charges have been dismissed i I don't i don't get this i the court says that (laughs) operating under the influence had to be dropped because it couldn't be proven beyond a reasonable doubt I can't even f- begin to understand what happened in the courtroom. Uh, I wish we had a Mark Garagos's input on this, but either this guy just threw a bunch of money at this and has the best lawyer on the planet, but I... He probably settled with every one of those people's car, every one of those people that he smashed their cars, but legally, I, I don't know how he got out of that one. I, mm-hmm. I I just I just don't know. They couldn't with prove. the state. So I I guess he's. I guess I, I don't know. Like reckless driving. Reckless was driving. It says the charges of reckless driving and operating under the influence had to be dropped because they couldn't prove beyond a reasonable doubt that that's what was happening. So how do you so smash it, into so any, everything? He was drunk he, or not, that was not reckless driving. Period. So say he was. Wasn't drunk. How could he not be charged with reckless driving? 
I don't know. I guess you could just say he intentionally hit everything on purpose, <laughs> and now he just has to write a check. He's like, I was just feeling like a dick one day, and I wanted to smash my car into a bunch of cars on the side of the road. Like, I don't, I don't really know how that pans out, but that's kind of that's kind of bad shit, crazy, right? That's horrible, man. <laughs> um, I don't, it it kind of. It, it, it kind of puts the whole idea of, hey, you can buy your way out of trouble. It puts it into a really bad light. You know, um, I, I don't I don't know. I don't really get it. But that's the follow up on that crazy story. <laughs> um, yeah, that just I, I saw that in the notes and I was flabbergasted. That just leaves you with your jaw dropped. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, anyway, I know you've got an appointment coming up. I'm going to head out to Barrett Jackson. I'm going to catch the last couple of days of Barrett Jackson and Scott. So I'm going to fly over there and uh, meet up with some people and grab some meetings and see how the event is going. Wave uh, to the lawman there. for me and have a wonderful time and travel safe. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't I, take your checkbook and tell the level guy, the uh, the cabinet guys. Uh, yeah, the Leverack guys. Yeah. I'll be I'll be uh, inquiring soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see them, and I'm going to see the Metron Garage guys while I'm out there. So I'm going to go by and nice. say hi to uh, to everybody. I wonder if we're going to see Marcus Angel floating around uh, floating around the area. If I see him I, at Barrett Jackson, I, I do I tell him to so. get back to work or or? No, it's done. <laughs> it's, it's done. done. Good. I just need a garage to put it in. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm then sure he's. Uh, I'm sure he'll he'll enjoy babysitting that car for for a little bit. Well, let's be honest. It it, it you know it's not going to be a detriment to the space in his garage around Barrett Jackson time when people were touring it. So, yeah, yeah, right. Um, well, if I see him out there, I'll, I'll I'll be sure to check in on it as well. But all right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, thanks so much for listening. Always appreciate it. Appreciate the comments on uh, on social media as well. You can follow us both. Goldberg and Goldberg's Garage. You can follow me at Moderator. And um, and and I have an addendum. You always say put the air in the spare. And also yeah. put the air in the spare and make sure the spare is the same size as the other <laughs> tires on your car. Because yeah. I got a 35-inch underneath my truck and it needs to be switched out to a 37. Oh, that's an interesting point. You can Just saying. You could, you could lopsided at home if you get a flat. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Who wants to do that? Nah, you call triple A. Get a flatbed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Get thanks so it. much. Until next time, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit carcastshow.com. Hey, it's Adam Carolla from the Adam Carolla Show. The tournament is finally here, and Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for this year's tournament. Bet Online has the best bracket contests, odds, and lines on every game, every round, right up till the national championship. You can access the most up to most up to the minute, I should say, wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices, and you can even track your bracket in real time all the way through the tournament. Whether it's college or pro hoops, Bet Online has it all throughout the entire college and pro hoop season. Head to Bet Online today and stay updated on all the action. Bet Online, the game starts here.